Sir, our education system is evolving to prepare each of our students for the future. MOE has to be prepared to do different things and to do things differently. I thank Ms. Denise Pua and Ms. Cheng Li Hui for their encouragement as we continue with our efforts to support our students with special educational needs, so SEN. Some of this expertise did not traditionally reside with MOE. Decades ago, we tried something different. We partnered with voluntary welfare organizations who had deep expertise in SEN support. And as both sides learned from each other, these partnerships evolved to strengthen support for our students. One good example of this is our relationship with EWA, with whom we work on different service models. The partnership extends to mainstream schools, where EWA provides training and consultation services to our educators, supporting students with physical and visual impairments. Today, 80% of our students with SEN are enrolled in mainstream schools. I'll just say that again to make sure we're all clear. 80% of our students with SEN are enrolled in mainstream schools. They are supported not just by allied educators, but also by educational psychologists and suitable intervention programs, including those provided by organizations such as AWA. As our students move on to the post-secondary space, they are supported by SEN support officers in each of our institutes of higher learning, or IHLs. To prepare for entry into the workforce, students with SEN can participate in SG Enable's IHL internship program, as well as the RISE mentoring scheme. We are looking ahead and constantly seeking ways to better support our students to realize the potential. There are different ways to do this, including the suggestion of an academy for those with special needs and all who support them. For now, MOE takes a targeted approach. We are enhancing our professional development for our staff and are also looking at how to better support students with SEN at key transition points, like when they enter schools. Strong partnership between MOE and the community has also enabled the sector to make significant improvements. Over the past year, MOE has worked with our government-funded SPED schools to ensure the smooth implementation of compulsory education with children with moderate to severe special needs. We are confident that students who can benefit from such specialized support will receive quality education in these schools. Yet, as Ms. Poir has pointed out, our efforts must go beyond legislation. MOE and our partners must continue to look for ways to do better to deliver affordable, quality, specialized education for our students. Grace Orchard School, an early participant of the School to Work Transition Program, S2W, did several new things to ensure that their students benefited from the opportunity. They reached out to the private sector for job opportunities. They updated their curriculum so that students could start their job training in the last years within the school. The ST, S2W program has seen positive outcomes, and we are working with MSF and SG Enable to scale it up. We are also looking into lifelong learning opportunities for those with special needs. Our Skills Future Credit Course Directory is continually updated with new courses. We also have a Skills Future Study Award for persons with disabilities to recognize those who demonstrate resilience and perseverance in pursuing lifelong learning. If I can address a few of the specific queries that Ms. Li, uh, Ching Li Hui and Ms. Denise Pop brought up. Um, the DSP program together with EPIC is organized by MSF and I need to defer to them to talk about those uh, interventions, but there are three MKs that offer the DSP program, and we'll study how we can do that better. Um, to Ms. Poir's questions, all teachers since 2005 have been equipped with uh, SEND training during their pre-service training at NIE. Each school also has a group of teachers which have gone, undergone certificate level training in special needs at NIE. These are known as teachers trained in special needs. Um, and then on top of that, there's at least one allied educator for learning and behavioral support, looking at the behavioral needs rather than the educational needs um, in every primary school. We're recruiting more of these allied educators, LBS, and our target is to ensure that all primary schools would have a baseline provision of two, and 95% of secondary schools would be given a baseline provision of at least one AED LBS. Mr. Ang Wei Neng asked about national education or any. There are people who feel that the storyline is worn or tired, or as Mr. Ang expressed it, that NE is propaganda. So MOE recognizes that we have to be open to doing national education differently. We must empower our students to discover what being Singaporean means to them personally, not because a syllabus or a textbook says so, but because they themselves know so through a process of discovery and the creation of a strong sense of their own identity. This was the basis for the work of the National Education Review Committee, where my MOE colleagues and I, together with colleagues 
from community organizations and the private sector had the chance to hear from over 2,000 students and educators. Our recommendations center on nurturing a sense of belonging to our country and community, a sense of Singapore's realities and challenges, and a sense of shared hope and aspirations as a nation. Our efforts to refresh and improve national education will then be driven by three groups of interventions. First, just as learning must evolve to remain relevant, national education discussions must take on contemporary issues, as well as the perspectives of different Singaporeans, including our students themselves. This will enable our students' shared appreciation for the ever-evolving Singapore story. Mr. Leon Pereira asked about how we expose our students to diverse perspectives. This is already happening. It is already done in subjects like social studies, history, and geography. Students undertake learning journeys. They come to parliament to visit and witness parliamentary debates. Their learning is well supported by educators. Our students examine evidence and different viewpoints before arriving at informed and reasoned conclusions. This includes exploring the rationale behind policy decisions and the pros and cons of alternatives. In general paper lessons, students consider different perspectives and learn to differentiate between fact and opinion. One of the NE Review Committee's recommendations is for students to discuss contemporary issues on a more regular basis and not just during subject periods, during these subject periods that I've just mentioned. On more regular basis and not just during the subject periods that I've just mentioned. Bendemir Secondary School is a school which already makes a conscious effort to do so and provides an example of how we can develop the process further. When I visited the school, I saw students having lively discussions on their own on issues relevant to Singapore, such as the environment, a car light society, technology, the future of jobs. And the school is looking to deepen this practice in their character and citizenship education periods so that students have the time and space to explore their convictions and reflect upon such issues. Our students may not always agree with each other. And indeed, in Bendemir Secondary School, in the session that I witnessed, there was a lively debate. And they may not even agree with their teachers. But we do want to ensure that there is space for respect, respectful conversations, that we nurture in our students' open-mindedness, respect for each other, and that they develop the skills for critical thinking. The second group of interventions is that we will facilitate citizenship experiences which empower our students, allowing them to find their own meaning as citizens. There are already milestone experiences throughout a student's journey in our schools, such as the National Education Show for all primary students, uh, and subsequently things like the Outward Bound School. Schools like Pingyi Secondary School decided to try something different. Their 15-year-old students received their NRICs in a special school center ceremony that emphasizes that despite their different backgrounds, these 15-year-olds must stand together and understand the shared privileges and responsibilities of being Singaporean. So we look forward to making more of such cohort or school-based experiences meaningful and available for our students. Educators are critical to any learning experience, so the third thrust of our efforts supports teachers. They have been doing well, and going forward, we will include more professional development opportunities and involve experienced educators in spearheading pedagogical innovation. If I may return to some of the questions that Mr. Pereira asked, he took uh, uh, a particular view about labels, and perhaps my labeling of his comments as partisan politics. Sir, I provided those words not as a label, but as an explanation of what he was asking for. And perhaps I may need to expand upon why I believe that that is an apt explanation for what he is asking for. He himself has acknowledged that he has attended schools in a non-partisan, non-political capacity. There is no obstruction to him doing so. What he is asking for is for him to be allowed to attend in a partisan political capacity. There is a difference. And he seems to believe that he has previously attended in a non-partisan political capacity. But I am assuming that the reason he's asking to attend in a partisan capacity is because he's assuming that everybody else attends only in a political partisan capacity. This is a level of hubris that is really quite remarkable. If he can attend in a non-partisan, non-political way, I think the assumption should be in good faith that other people can do as well. What he is asking for, what he is implying, is for him to attend in a partisan political way somehow provides balance within our existing framework. That is not so. 
What he is asking for is a fundamental shift that we bring partisan political debates by elected members of parliament into the schools. That is not what we do currently, and so it would be inappropriate for an invitation to be extended to him in his capacity as a member of a political party and as a member of parliament. It's not a label, Mr. Chairman. It's an explanation that what he's asking for is inappropriate. Professor Daniel Goh asked about our students' nutritional health. MOE had worked with the Health Promotion Board to survey our students' nutritional habits and also in the rollout of the Healthy Meals in Schools program. Under this program, canteen stalls prepare food with healthier ingredients and use healthier cooking methods. Since January 2017, all mainstream schools have come on board this program. Our schools also recognize that students benefit from meal breaks so that they can sustain their energy and focus. Students have two meal breaks a day with a longer lunch break if there are afternoon programs. We help our students understand the importance of a healthy and balanced diet. Primary school students are taught to read food labels, plan healthy meals, and the importance of eating enough and eating right. As MOE and HPB continue to work to build up their knowledge and their habits, I must stress the vital role that parents play in reinforcing these healthy habits at home. So MOE's efforts are ultimately part of our government's commitment to a society where people have the opportunity to do better and progress regardless of their starting point in life. Ms. Sylvia Lim asked about MOE's tracking of social mobility. Last week, the Minister of Finance updated the House on the government's efforts to study social mobility as measured by the incomes of adult Singaporeans as compared to their parents. On MOE's part, we track closely the progress of all students in our education system. Like other countries, we do pay close attention to those from more disadvantaged family backgrounds. We monitor how they fare in school, including at key milestones of education attainment, their progression to post-secondary institutions, including their polytechnics and universities. More importantly, we put in place programs to give extra support to those who need it right from early childhood prior to primary one, and many different interventions including meals, career counseling, and learning support programs. As a result of these interventions, we have made significant progress. Today, nine in 10 students, nine in 10 students from the bottom 20% of the socioeconomic uh, stratification progress to post-secondary education. 15 years ago, only five in 10 did. Today, more than half of our students who live in one to three room flats progress on to a publicly funded degree or diploma program. Internationally, as I updated this house last month, our 15-year-old students from the most disadvantaged families perform significantly better in PISA than OECD students of similar socioeconomic background. So social mobility has always been and will continue to be a priority of education. We start early on, we ensure access to quality education for all students, and on top of that, leveling up programs for the disadvantaged to give them every opportunity for success. In our institutes of higher learning, our students are prepared well for the workforce, with around nine in 10 of them able to get a job within six months of graduation. With MOE Kindergartens and the NIEC, we are also seeking to improve access to quality preschool education. Our efforts to provide space for exploration and applied learnings in schools will benefit all students, regardless of their backgrounds. In the higher education space, as well as in our future economy, it's about the diversity of pathways that recognize and reward different strengths, as well as investments in continuous learning and relearning that will ultimately serve our mission of ensuring that social mobility is maintained in this nation of ours. So as we look forward to a new future with many paths, many new possibilities, our education system continues to evolve, to evolve trying different things and trying to do things differently. What has remained unchanged is the belief that all of us together, MOE, schools, parents, and the community must continue to provide all our students with opportunities and experiences that bring out the best in them so that we can all realize our collective potential as a nation. Thank you.